So now as we continue our discussion on developmental modes, we'll entitle this next flowchart Developmental Modes 2. And again, as we're going through this flowchart, be sure to be looking at figure 32.10 just so that you can visualize the developmental processes that we're going to be covering. So, before we covered the idea of cleavage patterns and those being affected by whether or not your spiral cleavage or radial cleavage and those having subsequent effects, same idea is going to be established here, but different type of developmental mode are going to be looked at. Now, the first type of developmental mode on this uh, flowchart would be, and this is developmental modes two, on this flowchart would be the fact that we have to look at the coelom formation. How does the coelom, that cavity, that fluid-filled cavity, um, develop? And if it develops a certain pattern in a certain way, can we classify it further into different patterns in different ways? Coelom formation is simply the idea, we can broadly define it, as the fact that during gastrulation, that process of developing embryonic tissue, those embryonic tissue layers, gastrulation, um, embryos developing digestive tube and this happens in all of us, the embryos developing digestive tube initially forms what we call a blind pouch. It initially forms a blind pouch. And if we remember the idea of a pouch, we've seen this term before, pouch. That was the idea of an archenteron, right? And the archenteron eventually gives rise to this digestive tube that we eventually have within our bodies as a completely um, developed uh, infant, let's say, or completely developed adult for that matter. Now, in order for us to classify the types of coelom formation, we can actually base it off of the fact that protostomes will have a different type of coelom formation and thus Deuterostomes will also have a different type of coelom formation that we can uh, further classify. The whole idea behind this classification, this separation, is to figure out what makes an animal unique versus another animal even within the idea of the animal kingdom. So in the protostome side of the story, we can broadly just state the following. As the archenteron forms, as that blind pouch forms, in other words, as archenteron forms, uh, solid masses of mesoderm, solid masses of mesoderm, which was just that middle layer, solid masses of mesoderm, split and form the coelom. Split and form coelom. So how is the coelom formed, coelom formation, in a protostome? Well, while the archenteron is developing through gastrulation, solid masses of the mesoderm will split and fall off and form the coelom. And the deuterostome side of the story, and again, look at figure 32.2 to see this process a little bit better. In deuterostomes, it's a little bit different because here the mesoderm, actually the term used would be buds off or buds from, so that's the key here, buds from the wall of the archenteron, the wall of the archenteron, and so there we have a common uh, feature between both of them. The archenteron plays a big role, and why is that? Well, that's because the coelom formation is during gastrulation. Gastrulation really involves the archenteron in a great deal. So mesoderm buds from the wall of the archenteron, uh, and its cavity becomes the coelom and its cavity, and that makes sense, right, because the coelom is a cavity, becomes the coelom. And that's it. That's all we need to know in terms of how coeloms are formed in the protostomes and in the deuterostomes. Final developmental mode to look at um, is the fate of the blastopore. And this is where we finally can answer the question, well, where does the name protostome and deuterostome come from? Why are we calling a broad class of bilateria and subdividing bilateria into protostome versus deuterostome? Well, that's based off of this, the fate of the blastopore. And again, we talked about the blastopore earlier uh, in one of the first flow charts, and that was when we defined it as a term, and now we're going to apply that definition. So in this situation, when we look at the fate of the blastopore, we have to understand that there's going to be a group of cells, 
in the blastula, and there's another term we co covered earlier. Blastula, remember, was just a hollow ball of cells, of embryonic cells specifically. A group of cells in the blastula moves inward, moves inward to form the blastopore. So now, in order for us to figure out what the blastopore's purpose is, in order to figure out where it has a role in the developmental mode, we have to classify the two ways that the blastopore does the following group of cells in blastula moves inward to form blastopore. And the two ways are classified based off of whether or not you are a protostome. So in protostomes, this is going to happen. This blastopore fate story will be told. And also in deuterostomes. In protostomes, what we have is the following. Their name would mean, proto simply refers to first, and stome literally translates to opening. And this is essentially the way that we classify these organisms because their first opening is actually the mouth. So they are organisms that have a first mouth. First mouth opening. Why is there an opening in this situation? Well, that's because the blastopore is the opening. It's the opening based off of the result of an archenteron forming. That archenteron is a pouch, remember? And a pouch has an opening, and within it, there's stuff that can be put into it. The blastopore is that opening, and in protostomes, the first opening of them is going to be their eventual mouth. That's why they are called protostomes. And then the blastopore, for that reason, so the fate of the blastopore, it will develop eventually, DEV for develop over this arrow, eventually after a long amount of embryonic development, it will first develop into the mouth of organism. So this is why we call them protostomes. They are the first mouth opening organisms. Blastopore develops into the mouth of the organism. In the deuterostome side of the story, this is actually, deutero refers to second. And stome still means opening, and uh, thus we will call these organisms, those organisms that have the second thing that, the second opening would be a second mouth organism. So second mouth um, is our opening here. Some people just refer to this as first opening organisms, and deuterosomes are second opening organisms, and this thing that's opening is the mouth. So if the mouth is second on the deuterosome side, we have to first classify the fact that the blastopore must develop into something, right? The blastopore actually is going to develop into the other opening, and we're all thinking of it, the other, there are two openings to every organism, the mouth, and of course on the other side is the anus of the organism. And that's what happens here. In the deuterosome side of the story, we have the blastopore first forming into the anus of the organism, and then later, later on, the second opening, every organism has two openings, the second opening that forms later is of course going to be the mouth. And that's why they're called deuterostomes, second mouth. That's what we mean by this idea of stome being an opening. And that second opening that forms later is, of course, the mouth of the organism. And that's it. That's how we classify, or name at least, the protostome, why they're named that, and why deuterostomes are named the way that they are. And, of course, the coelom formation is also a different developmental mode to look at. So we have three developmental modes to be sure um, that we have a good grasp of the idea of the cleavage patterns that we see, the idea of the coelom formation, and the idea of the fate of blastopore, all of which are important, all of which are defining characteristics of many different animals that can be subdivided into protosomes and deuterostomes. Key thing I want you to remember, all of these developmental modes, what type of organism are we looking at? Broad organism is something that's bilaterally symmetric because only bilateria contains protostomes and deuterostomes. Thus, only bilateria will undergo the fate of the blastopore, will undergo coelom formation, will undergo cleavage patterns. And thus, we're going to be focusing a lot on bilateria from this point forward um, in much of unicont diversity.